Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul, I'm with a Dicey Review, and tonight we're going to learn how to play the 1-4 player game Ganshan Clever, being released by Stronghold Games in the US and Schmidt Spiele. Ganshan Clever comes with all of the components that you see here, including a stack of score pads, four felt tip pins, the bottom of the game box showing a silver platter which is used during gameplay, and six dice. To begin setup, start by placing the bottom of the box showing the silver platter in the middle of the play area. Next, give each player a score sheet and a felt tip pin. And finally, randomly determine a start player who will receive all six dice. In Ganshan Clever, players will take turns rolling and selecting dice to fill in different areas of their score sheet that match the color of those dice. Each color and section on a player's score sheet is filled in differently, and as players mark off boxes of each area, they can gain bonuses and chain different combos. When a player selects a die from the pool, any dice that are lower than the one selected go on the platter in the middle of the table and can be used by the other players at the end of the turn. So players have to be clever to select the best dice for themselves and leave the least valuable dice for their opponents. Ganshan Clever is played over a number of rounds depending on the player count. At the start of the first four rounds, players will receive bonuses that they can mark on their player sheets and use to their advantage. We'll discuss bonuses and what they do shortly. On a player's turn, they're known as the active player. The active player will have a chance to use up to three dice on their turn to cross off sections of their player sheet. The active player begins by rolling all six dice and then selecting one of the dice to use. The player places the die on the first open space of their player sheet and then uses that die to cross off a box within their player sheet. Any dice that have a lower value than the die selected are placed on the silver platter in the middle of the table for passive players to use in a moment. The active player then takes all the remaining dice that weren't selected or placed on the platter in the middle and rolls them again. The player then selects a second die and repeats the process. For instance, this player could select this orange die and then write something on their player sheet because of that. Since there were no dice in the pool that have a lower value than the orange die, none of them are placed on the platter. Finally, the player rolls all the remaining dice one more time and chooses a third die to use on their player sheet. After using the selected die, once again, any dice with a lower value are placed on the platter in the middle of the table. It's important to note that an active player is not required to use all three dice on their turn. They can use less if they want to and only select two dice, etc., but this is usually not an ideal situation. After the active player has selected and used up to three dice, all other players who are known as passive players will get a chance to select and use one die from the dice on the platter. Each passive player can simultaneously select and use one die from the platter to mark off a space on their player sheet. It's important to note that multiple players can use the same die from the platter. If a passive player is unable to use any of the dice that are on the silver platter, they are allowed to use one of the dice from the active player's score sheet instead. This may never be done voluntarily. It's only allowed if there is absolutely nothing the passive player can use on the silver platter. And if an active player is unable to use any of the dice that are rolled, they simply skip one of their potential three rolls. After each passive player has selected and resolved the dice of their choice and used any potential bonuses, the player to the left of the previous active player receives all six dice and becomes the new active player. One round is over after each player has been the active player once. Now that we've looked at how turns work and generally how a round progresses, let's look at how each die color will allow you to fill in your score sheet. The white die is wild and can be used as any other color to fill in any of the five score sheet sections. The yellow die will allow a player to cross off one box of the yellow section on their player sheet. To resolve the yellow die, the player can simply cross off any available number in the yellow section that matches the value of that die. 
So for instance, this player would have the option of crossing off this six or this six. In this instance, we can say that this player decided to cross off this six. If a player can complete all four boxes in one column of the yellow section, they will score the listed number of victory points at the end of the game. If a player completes all the boxes in one row, they will score the listed bonus immediately. And we'll look at what these bonuses do in a minute or two. When using the blue die, a player will mark off a box in the blue section of their player sheet. The value of the blue die is always combined with the value of the white die when selecting and vice versa. So for instance, if a player were to select this blue die with a value of 3 and the white die were showing a value of 5, this player would be able to cross off the section that shows 8. If a player selects the white die and uses it as a blue, and remember this is possible because the white die is wild, then the white and the blue value are still combined to determine the number that's crossed off. So for instance, in a future round, if a player selected this white 3 and used it as a blue, you would still combine the white 3 and the blue 3 to determine the total. So in this case, the player would be able to cross off the 6. It's important to note that these two values are always combined no matter where the dice are. So let's say, for instance, that a passive player wanted to use this blue one. To determine the number that's crossed off in this passive player's section, they would add this blue one and this white two, even though it's on a player's score sheet. This would allow a passive player to cross off a three in their blue section. And it's also important to note that since the wild die can be used as blue, a player can cross off two boxes of their blue section per turn if they are able to and wish to do so. Because, for instance, this player could select this blue 1 and make it a 3 on their player sheet, and then use this white 3 on another roll and combine it with the blue to cross off the blue 4 of their player sheet. Players will score points at the end of the game for the total number of blue boxes that they have checked off. The victory points earned are listed here. So, for instance, if a player has crossed off 7 boxes within the blue section, they would score 22 victory points. And it's also important to note that if a player completes a column or completes a row, they will unlock the listed bonus. And once again, we'll discuss what these bonuses do in a moment. If a player uses the green die, they can mark off a number in the green line of their player sheet. Players must start with the leftmost number and then work their way to the right. The players aren't allowed to skip spaces as they proceed to the right. For each space that they cross off, a player must have a value that is equal to or greater the number that is shown. So for instance, the third box on the green line requires a die with a value of 3 or greater. If a player used this green 4 on their turn, they would be allowed to cross off this green 3. This is possible because this 4 has a value that is equal to or greater than 3. Players will score points at the end of the game for how far along this line they've progressed. For instance, if the player has crossed off this box, they would unlock 28 points at game's end. And once again, just like with any other section, if a player is able to cross off the boxes showing a listed bonus, they will immediately gain that bonus. Players can use the orange die to write down numbers within the orange line. They have to start with the leftmost space and then proceed to the right just like with the green line. With the orange line, however, a player is allowed to write in any number that is rolled on the orange die. There's no restriction. So for instance, a player would be allowed to utilize this die if they wished and simply write a 4 in the next box. Once again, since they wrote it above a bonus, they would immediately gain that listed bonus. There are some spaces that have multipliers printed within the box. If a number is written here, it's multiplied by that amount and the new total is written instead. So for instance, if a player used this orange 4 but wrote it in this box, they would simply write 8. At the end of the game, the players will add together all of the numbers that are written on the orange line and score that many points. The last die to look at is the purple die. When using a purple die, a player is able to fill in numbers in the purple spaces, similar to the orange line. Players have to start off with the leftmost space and then proceed to the right without skipping spaces, just like the orange and green lines. It's important to note with the purple line, however, that each number written must be higher than the number to the left of that box. So for instance, the only number that a player could fill in to the right of this 5 would be a 6. 
There is one exception to the rule, however. If a 6 is written in a box, the line is reset, and you can place any number to the right of that 6. So for example, to the right of this 6, a player could write a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So let's say, for instance, this player used this 4 and wrote that here. They would gain the listed bonus immediately. And it's now important that the line's rules now apply again. So the only number available to be filled in to the right of this 4 are a 5 or a 6. At the end of the game, the player will add up all the numbers written in the purple line and score that many points just like with the orange line. Now that we've looked at all the dice and how they interact with your score sheet, let's look at what the unlocked bonuses will do for a player. There are two bonus actions that can be unlocked during the game. They can be used immediately after being unlocked, or they can be saved for a later turn or even a later round. When a player unlocks one of the bonus actions, they should circle the next available space that matches that action in the action row. So for instance, at the beginning of round one, each player is able to unlock one reroll bonus action. So at the start of round one, every player would circle the first available space on the reroll line. If a player uses one of their circled actions, they should cross out the circled box to show that that action has been used. So let's start off by looking at the reroll bonus action and what it will do for a player. The reroll action can only be used by the active player. After the active player rolls the dice, either for the first, second, or third time, they're allowed to cross off a reroll bonus if they wish to reroll all of the available dice. It's important to note that only dice in the available dice pool can be rerolled in this way. So for instance, when using a reroll action, the dice that are on a player sheet or on the silver platter are not rerolled. The next bonus action is the extra die action. At the start of round two, every player is allowed to circle one extra die bonus. When using this bonus, an extra die can be selected. It's important to note that this bonus action can only be performed at the end of a round, meaning after the active player has regularly assigned all of their dice or after a passive player has chosen a die from the silver platter. With this bonus action, a player can choose any of the six dice, even dice that the active player has taken and used, or even dice that the player just took with their regular action. Players are able to use the selected die one more time. So let's say, for instance, that this player on their turn had used the white six as an orange to gain 12 points, and then used the purple five to write this number on the purple line. They could, if they wanted to, cross off their first extra die bonus action to use this white six as a purple. This would give them one more extra die bonus immediately, and they could then cross off one of their extra die bonuses again to use the purple five right here. This would once again give them an immediate bonus, and we'll talk about what these bonuses do in just a moment. It's important to note that players can use multiple additional die actions during a single round, but each die can only be copied once using this bonus. So in our previous example, we've used the white die for its bonus once, and we're unable to cross off and use it again. We'd have to select one of the different dice, for instance, the purple that we chose. Now that we've looked at the bonus actions, let's look at the bonuses that you can unlock that relate to the different color sections. If a player unlocks a bonus showing a particular section color and an X, this means that the player is able to immediately cross off any box within that colored section. So for instance, if a player unlocked this bonus, they could cross off any box in the yellow section that they want. They can do this immediately. This may trigger additional bonuses that they can once again use immediately. This same rule applies with any other color. So for instance, if a player unlocks this bonus with the green section showing an X, they're simply allowed to cross off the next number on the green line regardless of its value. The same holds true with this blue bonus. The player would be able to unlock any available number in the blue section. If a specific number is listed with the bonus that's unlocked, the player must write in the shown number. So for instance, if a player unlocks this bonus, they would be allowed to write a five on the next open space of the orange line. It is important to note, however, that with these orange bonuses, if a player fills in one of the multiplier spaces, they still multiply that number. So for instance, if a player were to write this five here, it would be worth 10. And in a similar fashion, if a player unlocks a purple bonus showing a six, 
they simply write a six in the next available purple space. At the beginning of the fourth round, each player will be able to choose a bonus, and they have an either-or option. They can either use the X bonus to cross out one box in any of the sections where you simply cross out a number, or they could choose to use the six bonus to write a six in either the orange or the purple lines. The last bonus to talk about are foxes. If a player unlocks one of the fox bonuses, this will give them a potential benefit at the end of the game, and we'll discuss exactly how this bonus works during scoring. The game will be over after the last active player has finished their turn in the final round depending on the player count. So for instance, in a four-player game, the game will end after round four. In a three-player game, the game will end after round three. And in a solo or two-player game, the game will end after round six. A player can flip over their score sheet to see the listed score template on the back. To total their score, a player will write down the total that they've achieved within each section starting with the yellow. So for instance, in our example, the player has completed two columns, giving them a total of 20 points. In the blue column, the player has crossed off six boxes, meaning they would score 16 points. In the green line, the player has crossed off the space that shows the 36, so this player would gain 36 points for their green score. On the orange line, the player has scored a total of 46 points. This is the sum of all the written numbers. On the purple line, the player has scored a total of 37 points. In this particular example, this player has reached the bonus space showing three different foxes. Each fox that's unlocked will score the player points equal to their lowest scoring section. So for instance, each unlocked fox for this player one will give this player 16 points. Since the player has unlocked three foxes, they multiply three times 16 for 48 total points. So after adding all these points together, this player would score 203. The player who has the highest total wins. And if there's a tie, the player with the highest score in an individual area breaks the tie. If that doesn't break the tie, then the victory is shared. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. That was our video. We hope that it was helpful and we hope that it was informative. If you still have any questions about how to play the game, please comment below or email us directly at thedicereview at gmail.com. If you'd like to hear more from the Dicey Review, please consider checking out the Dicey Review podcast. It can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, pretty much any podcasting app. You can read our written reviews at thediceyreview.com and make sure and connect with us on social media or by visiting our Board Game Geek Guild. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, we'll see you at the table.